All right, our third point of concurrency is called the centroid. So the centroid is a point of concurrency, but this one has nothing to do with a circle. In fact, these all really have more to do with triangles than they do circles. It's a point of concurrency inside a triangle. It is the intersection of the three medians in a triangle. So that's a new word for us. So let's talk about what a median is. So you know on the road, a median is in the middle of the road. Um, when we're talking about our um, measures of central tendency, the median is the one in the middle when we write all the numbers in order. So it's you know really similar to that if you think about it. Here's what a median is. It is a segment. It's a special type of segment it has two endpoints, right? Every segment does. So this segment's endpoints. Whose endpoints are one vertex of a triangle and the midpoint of the opposite side. So if we can find the middle of the side across from the vertex, we'll just connect the vertex to that middle and that's a median. And every triangle has three of them, okay? So the centroid is the intersection of those three medians. Now the, the centroid has some really cool characteristics that you saw in hopefully the exploration in class. It is the center of gravity So you can balance the triangle on the centroid. The medians, each of those medians, these three medians divide each, each one, each one divides the triangle into two triangles of equal area. Now they aren't congruent, but they don't have to be congruent. Oops, sorry, of, I said the word congruent, of equal area, okay? They don't have to be congruent to cover the same amount of flat surface. So every median does that. The centroid is the center of gravity and the centroid splits each of these medians into a two to one ratio. And we'll look at what that means in just a second. Splits each median into a two to one ratio. And we know from our partitioning the line segment earlier in the year that two to one means there are gonna be a total of three parts though. This is part to part, not part to whole. Okay, all right. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So what do we need? We need a triangle if we're going to find its centroid. All right, so might as well stick with the theme I have going and I'll start with once again, kind of the same type of triangle. Now this also tends to confuse students and it's because you feel like you're doing one thing and you forget that you're actually doing another, okay? We do not have a construction for finding the midpoint of a segment, but we do know how to construct a perpendicular bisector of a segment. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna act like we're doing the perpendicular bisector, but all we really care about is the middle. I don't really care about the whole entire segment, just wanna know where the middle of each side is. All right, so how do we do the perpendicular bisector construction? We open our compass greater than half the length of the segment, and from each of the vertices, we swing arcs above and below the segment. We do it here as well. So this feels like we're finding the circumcenter because this is what we did when we found the circumcenter. This is how we started. But here's the difference. With the circumcenter, I then took these two points 
and I drew the whole perpendicular bisector because I wanted to know where those perpendicular bisectors were going to intersect. That's not what we're looking for this time. The medians are the segments that are gonna intersect. So I'm lining my ruler up. I could do it like this just to show you. Like this whole thing is the perpendicular bisector, but all I care about is that point right there. And that's the midpoint of the triangle. And this is the midpoint of this side and it's opposite this vertex. So I'm gonna connect that vertex to the middle and that is our first medium, okay? And I need to do that to the other two sides of the triangle. So this time I'm gonna do it without spinning the triangle all around. So come over here to this side and we need to be sure our compass is open greater than half and we'll swing arcs on either side of the line segment. And then we wanna do it from the other end point All right, I didn't go quite far enough. So if you did it, if you made the same mistake, just come back over, all right? Okay, so once again, we're going to line up these two points, but I'm not gonna draw the whole perpendicular bisector. I just want to know where the middle is. So lining those up, I can mark just the middle and then the median, this is the middle of this side. So the median comes from this vertex, the opposite vertex to the midpoint. So here's our median. So that should be the centroid. We wanna do this final side. So this is the one side I've not bisected yet. We haven't found its middle. So open the compass greater than half. Swing arcs above and below. Concentrate so you remember which is which. This is the arc I swung a moment ago, and this is the arc I just swung, okay? All right. So this intersection point and that intersection point, okay? I could, um, I could show you again, just in case you forget. So we're talking about this segment out here. The perpendicular but all I really care about is right there the middle of this side and that's going to get connected with that vertex so this vertex to this point vertex to point and there you have it this is the centroid all right so if we were to cut out our triangle, we could balance it on that point. We could take our ruler and balance the triangle along each of these medians, but each of these med medians split this triangle into two triangles with equal areas. And then this is the relationship is true. However long this is, let's call it X. This just, so this is from the centroid to the side. The other distance along the same median from the centroid to the vertex is double that or 2x. So it's in a 2 to 1 ratio. The shorter piece is the piece from the centroid to the side. And I should be able to illustrate that with my compass. For instance, if I focus on this purple median, if I measure the short distance, so the distance from the side to the centroid, I should be able to swing it off once, twice. So I can fit two of them where there was only one there. So a two to one relationship, okay? And that's the centroid. All right, there's a fourth point of concurrency. It's called the orthocenter. It has something to do with Euler's line. It is the intersection of the three altitudes of a triangle, three altitudes. And an altitude of a triangle comes from a vertex perpendicular to a side. That's an altitude. Every triangle has three, but sometimes the altitudes even fall outside of the triangle. So it's possible for the altitudes to intersect outside and Time willing, we'll talk about the orthocenter in class.